Welcome to the Business Vitality Podcast. My name is Katherine Canty. I am the host and an executive coach. I work with teams, individuals, and leaders to help create measured leadership change. We do that using practical applications, and our clients are creating 100% measured results as seen by those around them. Not necessarily what I think or what they think, but what the other people are seeing. And they are being recognized for the hard work that they're doing. If you're interested in learning more about some of the work that we're doing, you can learn more at KatherineCanty.com. I would love for you to subscribe to this show, to Business Vitality. This is my way to continue to pay it forward and share business best practices. Stay tuned and listen to the interview. Thanks for being here. Dustin Bogle, you are the CEO of Gym Reinforcements, found on the web at GymReinforcements.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to connect, Catherine. Let's do this. I appreciate it. All right, Dustin, high level. What is Gym Reinforcements? Yes, thank you for asking. Um, It is a follow-up service for gym owners. We will do all of their outbound to their leads, whether they're new leads coming in on their ads or old leads that have been sitting in their database to move them into a trial program so that they can grow their business and get more clients and members. All right. So you just said something really key. The name of this podcast is Business Vitality. And these are like the best practices of like what keeps businesses going decade after decade. And you just talked about follow up. I mean, do you know how few people are actually taking this and doing something with it? And how long have you just always been a huge follow up person or what happened for you to just want to create this? I I think that the source of energy where you tap into your fo- your follow up is your conviction. I think if you are really excited to get your product or service into someone's hand, you won't look at follow up as an annoyance. You will look at it as I must do this. I need to get the word out. And I think what holds a lot of small businesses back from growing is their conviction starts to to wane. It starts to get distilled. They start to lose their excitement for their own product or service. And I get it because you've just been beaten down by hard times, you know, an employee, um, just the day-to-day grind, or you just, you know, years of doing the same thing over and over, maybe boredom's even settling in. And so sometimes you need to refall in love with your own product or service. And one of the best ways to do that is to read customer reviews, go into your Google, go into your Facebook Go to the review section and read how you've changed people's lives. If you sell things on Amazon, go read the reviews and it will almost re-spark your love for what you do if you feel like that's you when you hear me say that. So number one, get more convicted. Now when you go do follow-up, you won't feel annoyed that you're bothering people. But we've all heard this saying in business, right? The fortunes in the follow-up. Yes, you do need to reach out to people more. We, on our, in our system, in the way we do things, we're reaching out to you twice a day in your first week because we're so determined to change your life. We know when you get healthy and fit, it will just be a ripple effect that will change everything in your life. And it did for me, it does for our customers, and that's why we're so excited to reach out to these people. But yes, most businesses need more help and follow-up. Last thing I'll just say on this, Catherine, we're putting a pool in our house and I called five pool companies. The first three never called me back to this day. And this was like three months ago when I did this reach out. The fourth called me back. But then uh, when I called them, I missed it. When I called them back, they tried, got me back to me a week later. And then the fifth was at my house uh, later that afternoon. And that's who got the job, right? So all five of them probably could have been equivalent in their skills. But the person with the best follow-up won the business. So I see it in all industries. This is not just something for gyms. Everybody can improve follow-up. I totally agree with you. And it sounds like you found this opportunity in your business to create this follow-up process because it was a need that you saw yourself. And then you realize probably the rest of the market needs. Can you talk about that? Because I think that's really where the gold starts is we pay attention yes. to what our pains are and and solve for it and even take it further and and figure out how do we figure out what we've done and then be able to share it with others. Talk about that a little bit because that's that's creating long-term business success in in my opinion. 
Yeah. And, and you're right. I, I'm an, I'm an action taking machine. So I'm like this tornado and I'd make a mess. And then I, my team would clear it, clean it up and we'd have more clients and the business was growing. And I was just like, okay, I got to calm this tornado down. I got to write down what exactly I do. And I noticed that I had a habit of going into three buckets and that's in my book. I actually call it the fortune follow-up system. I teach everything. You don't have to hire us. I literally teach it to you, but if you do want done for you, you can always reach out to us. But if you're ready to do it yourself, I, I outline it all. So basically those three buckets are your brand new lead. So if you're running, say, digital ads, marketing on Facebook, et cetera, that's your first bucket is brand new leads, fresh, just opted in in the last week. Then you got your, your contact database. This is where your big mother list that you've grown since you've opened doors of your business. It's probably thousands of contacts. And so I would you know hit that list as well. And then the third is past customers. Because they say the best way to find new business is old business. And so they already know your prices. They know where you're located. They know what your whole thing is. They don't need the sales pitch. Usually they just need some sort of cool offer or entry point to get back into the business. And so those are your three main buckets you can go dipping into at any time. And most people just hit number one over and over. Like our new leads, our new leads, our new leads. Forget about all their old leads and they forget about their old customers and never make them an offer. And so that's kind of what I, when I sat down, I looked at it, I said, this is kind of my whole routine that I go through every day. And so I, I that was, you know, the first part of the fortune follow-up system. The second part that I'm happy to share with your audience, Catherine, is like, what exactly do I do for each of those buckets, right? So I have a system for each one. For the brand new leads, we do what's called a five by two follow-up system. So that's five X two. And so this five by two it's for the first five days, we reach out to you twice a day. But here's the important part. A lot of people use the same media channel. We change it with every reach out. So it's text, call, email, social media DM. You can even do a video message, but change it because different strokes for different folks. Um, people who are in the professional world, again, a lot of C-suite, they're probably going to be more email responsive. And you talk to a young kid and they're going to want to talk on DMs or texts. And then, you know, you got an older population. They're going to want to get on a phone call and they want to ask a lot of questions. Everybody has different preferences and how they communicate. So make sure you have a nice spread on your follow up. So that would be for your brand new leads. Now, your prospects, it, it's probably, again, going to be a big list. So what we do is we do a 10 percent a day blast. So if I have 5,000 contacts, I'm just going to cut out 500 of them. And I'm just going to do a, a, a check-in message. I could send them a free PDF or value, you know, lead magnet. I could just plug a podcast episode, but just something to keep them warm and engaged. Um, and, and that's a great way to kind of go about it. Because you don't want to send the whole list something every day. Um, it can really start to get them annoyed. And then you might not be able to manage all the replies that come in if your list is really big. Um, and the third one is your past customers. We just have it on a quarterly cycle. Again, that's what we found works good for us in fitness. But each one, we change the theme or the offer or the reason why. And one of the best lessons I could pass to somebody in terms of like creating an offer or marketing is there's got to always got to be a story behind why you're doing it. So is the reason for the sale because it's our four year anniversary of being in business? Great. That's why. Let's call it that. That's the whole campaign name. Um is it to get ready for summer, you know, which is very easy for us to do in fitness? Is it because it is Mother's Day is coming up? So that's why I run this Mother's Day sale, but a reason why, right? And so um, one of the best ones we've done was called the Baby Comeback Campaign. We were running a 90s theme workout in the gym. And so we just thought of this clever marketing campaign. We had this boy with like a white tank top and jeans, and he just looked like a pretty boy and he's crying and he's got his arm reached out. And it was called baby come back. And we were sending it to our past members saying, we miss you, you know, baby come back. And we're like, come, come back, reactivate your membership. We want you here for our nineties theme workout. And we're going to play boy band songs and have fun. And so that was one of the most successful campaigns. What was the reason why? Just because we decided to do a nineties theme workout and a nineties boy band theme, you know, imagery on the, on the, on the text and emails that went out. And so that that's it is just like, those are your three buckets and then find a cadence that works for them. Again, five by two heavy on new, 10% uh, a day for your main contact list. And then for us quarterly to pass members is enough that we're not going to 
burn them and make them upset and say, leave me alone. So that that's that's the fortune follow-up system in a nutshell, Catherine. Okay, I love it because, because it works because you're doing this. And even when I started my career in banking 25 years ago, we had the two, two, two process for follow-up, the two days, two weeks, two months, who would follow up with new clients. <laughs> And what you're talking about, the five by two, like this stuff has been around, but what you're doing is you're tailoring it to fit the needs of your customer. And that's how businesses are able to redefine what it is. And you're tying it back into the follow-up process, which you just use that great example with the pool example, which is, it's horrible to hear that these companies are not following up and the business is literally sitting in front of us. And all we have to do is be intentional with our follow-up and our conversation. Yes. So do you want to it look like you had something to say? I don't mean to cut you off. You oh, no, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm loving this. So yeah, we, we can move on. You're good. <laughs> okay. So tell me, you've got, um, when you talked about, I'm just curious, you talked about text, DM, phone calls, all these different ways of being able to reach out. Are you able to capture that at the front end? And then is it just a huge management resource that that you're providing to do that um how do you what does that look like yes yeah, so again the tools we use are a little bit uh more built for the fitness industry but i know high go high level is a great one that could go across all industries um one of our favorite tools is called fit pro tracker it, but again it is a fitness uh, example and they allow you to do a text and then a follow-up task, but you can identify what you want the follow-up task. So we could say, now write them an email with this you know, script, or now film a video message and, and send them you know, a video message and mention that and call out their name. So we're able to build out these automations, even though it's manual tasks, it just prompts the salesperson to do it. And so guys, you don't even got to get super technical and have this. Um, the early years when I did this, it was literally a spreadsheet the names came in, name, phone number, and email. And then each section of the five by two was a column that the person just had to check the box on. And inside that cell, I wrote the script. And it, like, that was the basic, you know, the poor man's version of the five by two. So like Google Sheets are still a great thing. Don't, don't, don't get too high and mighty and make your software stack super expensive and, um, you know, complicated. Keep it simple, right? I think that's what some of the best businesses are doing. They just boil it back down to what are the key items that we need to do to deliver home. Um, just like you can look at in the fitness industry and you can see what those key items are that we got to do to deliver results. You're doing this in the in the business. And, you know, for you to, to, to get down, to keep it simple, to teach others, like, can you talk about delegation? Is, has it always just come to you very easily? Or how did you finally realize today's the day I got to get some of this off my desk? What was that like? Yeah, at first, I'm sure every entrepreneur can agree, like, at first, no, because you're scared to death that they're going to do not as good of a job as you are. And I, I think the way I heard it said that allowed me to kind of feel good about it and release it was that the person will probably never do it as good as you because, you know, like, you're the entrepreneur, your back's against the wall, your name and reputation's on the line. But if you can find someone that will do it 80% as good as you, that's good enough because the customer will more than likely not notice a difference. You you will, absolutely, because you are the detail person and you're, 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 you're going to freak out about it, but the customer won't. And so I've decided to try it out and lo and behold, they, did, they didn't. There was no, you know, like long line of cancellations. There was no like business burning down. And so then what got, I switched from scared to excited. Then I was like, now I want to be a delegation machine and I love delegating. I, I, you know, basically once a month, we'll go through my task list and look for what's got to go. And I love getting stuff off my plate because I know, number one, I'm protecting my energy. I'd say it's the biggest mm -hmm. thing to share with everybody. For you to be in the long game here, you have to manage your state and you have to manage your energy, right? And so the energy is going to come down usually to the tasks you're doing, like, or, you know, the energy will come from you doing things you love or you hate or you fill up your day with a bunch of stuff you hate it's going to feel pretty normal to start saying words like burned out tired uh, you know like uh, you know like i'm not loving my business anymore no you do you just put too many of the wrong tasks on your plate you will probably fall back in love with your business if you did all the stuff that you love to do in your business right so take off those things that you hate 
And the other part of it is obviously going to be your health. I'm obviously in the fitness industry, so it's going to come naturally for me. But I've just seen it with so many entrepreneurs when they drop pounds of fat. I feel like pounds on your body is literally pounds in your head. And so like you're, you're just walking around with all this extra weight, whatever you got, 10, 20, 30 pounds of extra weight is extra baggage in your head. And it's like better than any pill you can pop or drug or whatever supplement. Uh, when you lose the weight, just people telling me the clarity I feel, oh my God, I have so much more energy. I'm so much more focused. And it's just because they dropped some pounds. So take care of your health and that you know energy and protect yourself from energy draining activities um, and, and delegate you know, and elevate. That's the way to go for sure. <laughs> Love that. So let's take a, like a fitness kind of break here. I want you to, because I feel that same feeling that you're just talking about. If you do, you know, weights go up and down over, over the years. And when I know I reduce the weight a little bit, it physically feels better. Like it feels lighter. There's that clarity that you're talking about. And there's so many of us that are like, God, oh, if we could just lose that, you know, 10 pounds, I would be in a different mindset. And mindsets are so big uh, right now. And they always have been, but it just continues to be one of those things that we need to address. So if you've got somebody and you, you're the expert at this, they want to lose some weight, like where do they even get started? Like it's easy to go join a gym, but that, that joining a gym does not equal you just lost 10 pounds. We, we can attest to that. Where do you start? Uh, it's funny because there's a lot of entrepreneurs who they kind of cut their teeth doing labor work, right? Like construction workers, waiting tables, like doing all this physical work. And then when you kind of make it, you get a nice cushy office job and you get the, I'm going to buy the most ergonomic chair, ergonomic keyboard. Like, so you're just sitting, right? And like, you know, like that, that's pretty much what it is. It's just, that is a gift and a curse. Like it's comfortable you feel good, you feel important, corner office, but you are not moving and just as simple as adding steps. Um, so buying a treadmill that goes under your desk, could you take a Zoom and walk and talk? Probably. Um, can you walk the building? Can you walk in the morning while you're listening to podcasts um, and prepping your notes for your day? But literally, it sounds so silly and baby step, but literally walking can get people to lose pounds of body fat. Um, and so I would say start small because most people, especially entrepreneurs, we like to go hardcore and attack it with extreme energy. Um, but if you're not working out now, then that's probably not going to work out in your favor. So find a way to, you know, we also like to multitask. If someone's like, Hey, go for a walk. Then yeah, like add in the podcast, take a call, take a sales call, um, do something where you feel like it's going to be productive, but it's also going to help you with your health. But yeah, I would say number one, it's going to definitely be, um, you know, for movement, walking. Number two, the king of macros is always going to be protein. And so if you could just increase your protein, start tracking that number. I know macros is about tracking fats, carbs, and protein. You don't need to worry about the other two if you're trying to lose fat. It's literally protein. Protein is everything. And they say aim for one gram per pound of body weight um, as your goal. And even if you fall short of it, that's okay. Um, but you'll be surprised most people when they track that they are way, way below their, their goal. And that, that tells them what, Oh, well now it's simple math and science, If I'm not moving and I'm not hitting enough protein. That's the secret to gaining weight. Um, so when people say, well, it's the secret to losing weight, do the opposite, move more and eat more protein and magically it falls off. So don't make it more complicated. I know there's so many magical diets, diets and gurus and supplements that all promise the world it's the basics. We want to hear a more advanced answer, but it's just the basics that always will work. I agree with you completely. You, you've talked about kind of multitasking, listen to the podcast while you're moving. Um, talk about time management a little bit, if you don't mind, because we're all uber busy and time is the only thing that we all have that's equal. Um, if you don't mind, do you have a few things that help you when it comes to time management? Yeah, number one, um, I would say make sure you are prioritizing your tasks because it's very easy to just do what you always do every day or do what you just repeat what you do each week. Kind of pause yourself and ask, is this task helping the actual business grow? Because everybody could say they're busy. I don't think anybody I've talked to in my lifetime said, I got so much extra time. I don't know what to do with it. 
everybody says they're busy, but I challenge to say, make sure you're the right busy. And so, um, you know, what are you focusing on? What are you doing? Is it moving the needle forward? Do you really got to answer that email? Do you really got to schedule those social media posts or could someone else do it for you? So the easiest way to clear off your calendar is to just start saying no uh, to the tasks you're doing that are, are busy work and not productive work. And maybe even if you compile them, this is like, a, a, you know, a very part-time admin or assistant that you can hire and hand it off to. And then boom, your whole calendar, you just freed up 10 hours of work. Um, so at that point, you know, as entrepreneurs, we can quickly then refill it with new stuff or uh, you can block it off. Like I, I desperately needed uh, a couple of things not too long ago. I needed a content block. Like I, I, I do a lot of content and I need to block out like a four hour period. So I was fiercely attacking to get that block removed of, of all interviews and meetings and all that stuff. But then um, I was quickly being asked, hey, you got a minute for that? And then I start looking at that calendar, that content block. I was like, I could take it there, could take it there. But I had to learn to be, you know, fierce and say, no, that is for content and I need to keep it that way. Um, then another thing I would say that's really helpful is to just have a day where you don't have any meetings, like have it as a working on your business day, not a, in your business day. And as you see, I started moving slowly and slowly towards theme days. So I was like, you know, Mondays was like, you know, a PL check, you know, starting to hit the ground running on my tasks. Tuesday was like a, a content day, not a full day, like a block of it, half of the day. Then I had like a, a Thursday was like no Zooms, no nothing, no meetings. So like you can start moving towards theme days because I think it's really powerful when you get into a mode or a mindset that you can just do that more effectively nonstop versus, oh, sales call, oh, got to take a meeting, oh, got to work on this email campaign. It's hard for your brain to switch all these, these types of thinking. Um, so get into like blocks where you can focus on one type of work or a day where you can focus on one type of work as well. You uh, hit the nail on the head. I cannot agree with you more with the, uh, the blocking, the time blocking. I've watched people over the years use it. It's a game changer. So what yes. you're saying, very few people do this, but like this is what elevates success in an accelerated way is controlling your time, just like what you're saying and protecting it like it needs to be. And as you talk, I hear about, I hear these relationships and conversations with folks in the business. I hear you're having conversations and relationships with folks that, um, that are clients and people that are supporting the business. All of this works well when you have trust. How do you build that trust across all these different types of relationships as you keep talking with them? And, and trust is really important in order to really delegate and, and deliver. So do you mind talking about trust for a little bit? It's funny. There's a line in my book where I say trust equals transactions. And sometimes that's not always about money. Um, it comes in multiple ways. So I'll explain. Yes, the, the number one complaint we hear from gym owners and just business owners when they invest in digital marketing is that the leads are not buying, the leads are no good, you know? And, and I said, no, actually they just don't trust you. They, they act, they opted in because they want help. And so then they're like, we're doing your follow-up. We're reaching out twice a day, but nobody's buying. No one's ready to go. And I'm like, let me challenge you here for a moment. When's the last time you click the follow button on somebody on Instagram and immediately you get fed their stuff. And then that day you bought something from them. Like same day, you follow them and you bought from them. Probably never, right? How did it really happen when you bought from somebody who's an online influencer? You follow them, you stalk them, you watch the stories. Eventually they made a case. They made you really start to believe in their mission, their vision. And 30, 60, 90 days, you click the buy button and you purchase. So I was like, if you don't buy in a rush, why are you expecting these people to buy in a rush? Because we're all wired the same way. And I said, the difference was the influencer saw the long-term game and they knew that the trust took time. It's going to take 30, 60, 90 days. It's different for everybody. Some people are first adopters. Hey guys, I announced this app and they're the ones that buy on that day. Then you got the slow adopters who are the, you need to influence and you know wear them down. And then you got the late adopters who could be a year down the road and then you're going to get the non-adopters who are just never going to buy from you. No matter what, you could sell something for a buck and they just don't align with you. So understand what's the difference at all those different stages was the trust. And so the more you could put out there that builds trust with your audience, 
the more your business will grow. And if you can even like build it into a campaign or like a, you can even track it. You're like, they start trusting us at day 21. Cause that's when we start getting all the sales from opt-in. How can we get this down to day 14? How can we speed up trust? And one of the techniques I teach in the book is you, the, the best way to build trust is to tell stories is not to sit, make us a, a sale or to cut down prices or anything that doesn't build trust. That's very transactional is who are you as the owner? Why'd you open this business? Um, tell a story of your customer, tell a story of how this product got built or the service got invented, but tell stories is how we build trust with one another. Um, and so that that's pretty much uh, also going to apply to your team as well. How do I get my team to stay on? I mean, I, I got two people. I was proud to say last year hit their five year mark, but now we're like, we got to celebrate their six years coming up. And I got multiple people four years on the team too. How do I have a team that stays with me for years? And I know the answer is because they trust me. They know I'm not here to take advantage of them. In fact, I brainstorm regularly how to make them more money because I know I will lock them in to stay longer. And so we have dinners together. We we laugh together. We cry together. We, we are very open, but we have a lot of trust on our team. And so I would say this is a skill that you want, you will apply to both sides of your business internally and externally to make it grow. It's extremely valuable what, what you're talking about. And I want to, um, as we kind of close out, your book is called Reinforce Your Gym. And you've talked about, perfect. We and it's one of the best sellers. So like this thing is, it's working and you just bring down all these great lessons learned, which is fantastic. You talk about follow-up, the fortune follow-up system. You talk about trust equals transactions in the book. Um, what, maybe what's one more thing that maybe we didn't talk about yet that's in that book because what you've referenced is like just gold. So what else is there? Just one more thing, if, if you don't mind sharing. Yeah, I mean, I I got stories for day, Captain. We can come back together and do a uh, you know a part two for sure. I I can go all day, but uh, I I would say that the big thing is um, as as a leader, there's really two things you could do to grow your business and to get more buy-in from your team, to get more loyalty from your customers, to also then spread your message. Number one is. You want the environment in your business, if you have a brick, brick and mortar they're going to, or just when they engage with your business, or if you have a Facebook group, anytime they engage with it, their thought pattern should be, this is one of the most encouraging places in my life. And so that's why people want to just like throw away their life savings and just live at Disney because it's the most encouraging places, encouraging them to dream all the time. Why do people want to just like, sleep in their Tesla and live in their Tesla because all this cool technology, like it's just encouraging them that they're doing something good for the for the, the planet and for themselves. And they've just got this cool tool, right? And then people rush to communities to be around like-minded people because they're seeking the encouragement they might not be getting in their household or at their place of work or elsewhere. So just realize people are always fiending for encouragement. And a story I'd like to share around this is a classic or a very classic story of an ice bucket challenge. Um, not the old one we all know where everyone threw ice on people's shoulders. This was people being brought in for a test and asked to stand in an ice bucket only up to their ankles, but to ask them to stay in it until they couldn't stand it and that the researchers were going to time them. And so these people signed up, they did it, and the researchers wrote down all their time. But they said, we only need you to do it one more time but we have a second set of uh, people who also have volunteered. They're going to come in. They're going to stand in front of you. And all they're going to do is clap and cheer and hoop, you know, hoopla and ask you to just push through the pain and fight for it. And so they step back in the ice bucket and they do it again, this time with a complete stranger, not trained coach or somebody that's a professional encourager. But they just said words of encouragement. Every single person was able to double or triple their time in the ice bucket by simply having another human encouraging them. So I would ask you, is that something worth doing, knowing you might get two to three times the person being in your in your company, right? Not to say your company is a miserable place and it's an ice bucket and how long can they last, but we go a lot longer when we're being encouraged. So are you leading with the carrot or the stick? You know, the stick beating people down says what you're doing wrong or the carrot, this is what you're doing good or this is what I want to get you to once you achieve something. So that, that would be 
the first thing we can do to improve as a leader is just be more encouraging. The second, though, at the same time, is be more challenging. And so what I mean by that is asking people to always do their best. There's a famous story about Steven Spielberg that if you work on set with him, he will pull more out of you than you knew you had in yourself because he has a standard. I don't make movies. I make movies that win Academy Awards. And that's how he carries himself. And he's known for some of the biggest blockbusters we know, right? Like E.T., Jurassic Park, Jaws, it go, the list goes on and on. He has a crazy catalog of movies. But they say, if you're on set with him, one of the most famous lines he will always, say, you'll hear him saying it over and over again, is the, the phrase is, is this your best work? So when a costume designer says, we're ready for the actors to come try on their outfits, he'll say, wait a minute, is this your best work? And the guy with the cameras, we got the perfect so shot, Mr. Spielberg, come check it out. Before I do, is this your best work? And so all day, he's just challenging everyone around him and no other director does that. But guess what? No other director is hitting the amount of Academy Awards that he is. And he just simply challenges his team. He says, is this your best work? And then people, when the movie's over, they, they beg to be on his next project. They want to work with him simply for the fact that he pulls more out of them than they knew they had in them. So I think if we can be encouraging, but also find that balance of challenging, that's what great leaders do can you do to grow their business and, and and to have team members that do their best for them every single day. This has been a fantastic conversation. I really appreciate it. If someone wants to learn more about how to get in touch with you, what do you suggest? Thank you so much, Catherine. I hope that your audience got a lot of value out of it. Um, you guys could definitely follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Just search my name, Dustin Bogle. Obviously, you could pick up a book if you want to hear some more great stuff. And uh, the final thing is, if you are a gym owner, feel free to join my free group on Facebook called Gym Reinforcements. Lots of free resources on there for you as well. So uh, those would be the best places to connect. Okay, Dustin, this has been perfect. Dustin Bogle, you are the CEO of Gym Reinforcements, found on the web at gymreinforcements.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks for listening to the episode. If you like it, please subscribe, share this episode or this show with other people around you. The greatest form of a compliment is a referral. I really appreciate them. And if you think that you want to learn more about some of the work we're doing, I encourage you to reach out to KatherineCanty.com. You can schedule a call or just continue to read articles and information that we post out there. Thank you so much for being here.